guys, welcome to another chemical engineering tutorial brought to you by the ChemEng student. In this lesson we're going to take a look at a transient process integral balance, the derivation, and a case study solve. So the first question we need to ask is, what is a transient process? Well the transient process is one in which the value of a system variable will change per unit time. So in other words, what we're basically saying here is an unsteady state system, i.e. something is going to change with respect to time. So that means that inherently batch and semi-batch root systems are always going to be transient because the key variables within these processes will change per unit time. Things like the, the concentration of the products and the reactants will vary as time progresses. Now there are two types of balances that can be done for transient processes. We can have a differential balance or we can have an integral balance. Now here we're going to talk about the integral balance and I'll put a link in the description to our tutorial on the differential balance which goes into the details of that. And ideally what you would want is to be familiar with the differential balance first before watching this tutorial. So if you're already familiar with the differential balance then that's great. Um, if not I would advise to look at that and then come back to this video because we're going to build upon that tutorial um, in order to solve these sets of problems. So the integral balance method here is we're going to use just the same as the um, differential, we're going to use the general material balance equation as our basis for developing the equations and solving the problem. So that's our accumulation is equal to the input plus the generation minus the output minus the consumption. Now before we look at the direct integral method, we need to first reconsider the differential balance or the differential form that we seen in the previous um, video that discusses transient processes. So when we looked at the differential balance, we had dm by dt is equal to q in and then plus r gen minus q out minus r cons. So that's just the, the abbreviations for these terms here with appropriate nomenclature. Now what we can do to make this, or to be able to switch this to the integral method, is we need to basically remove this dt and bring it across to the right hand side. So that means each one of these components will be multiplied by dt. And this is where the, the basis foundation on the switch between differential and integral comes into play. Because now what we can do is we can give each of these terms their own independent integral with the set of limits of, in this case, T0 and Tf. T0 meaning the initial time and Tf meaning the final time. So if we were to write this equation in its integral form with the appropriate limits, we would end up with this equation here. So this is basically the integral balance equation. And it is worth noting here that the parameters are deemed constant. If any of them are deemed constant, they can be removed from the integration. So for example, say we had um, density was constant, then the density could come out and be placed here on that integral. It wouldn't play a part in the actual calculation because ultimately it would cancel itself out. So here, that is the general um, overview for how you convert between the differential and the integral balance. It's very, very straightforward. Now let's take a look at a working example here to see how we can go from the differential and then to the integral balance. So we have water level in a reservoir has been basically decreasing steadily during a dry spell and there's been concern that the drought could last for another 60 days. Now the current water consumption by the council is 10 to the power 7 litres per day. 
and it has been estimated by um, experts that with the rainfall and the stream drainage into the reservoir, coupled with evaporation of the water, should yield a net water input rate of approximately 10 to the power 6 multiplied by the exponential to the power minus t over 100. And the units are of course litres per day. Now t is the time given in days at the beginning of the drought. So we need to do two things. We need to write a differential balance in the system. So this is like a revision of our full transient differential balance um, tutorial. Again, I'll put a link in the description to that if you're interested. And then we need to integrate the balance to determine the reservoir volume at the end of the 60 days. So we'll do the balance for in terms of mass because ultimately we don't have that explicitly but what we can say is that the mass given as m is going to be the volume multiplied by the density which would be kilogram per litre. Now that means that we can re-express this as dm over dt and we can express these in rho dv over dt. We explain this in greater detail in the previous um, tutorial. But from here, we have our accumulation is equal to our input minus output, and therefore we can say that our accumulation is denoted by rho dv over dt, so that's here. Our input is the 10 to the power 6 e to the power minus t over 100, and that has to be multiplied by the density, because ultimately that's the way in which we get the mass. And then our output is going to be the minus, so rho, times by 10 to the power 7. So we can tidy this up because we have density on all three terms. So we end up with this equation here, dv by dt, and so forth. Now what we can say for the differential balance is that the initial volume of water can be found when the t is equal to 0. So if you follow the process and the calculation, you will work out that V of 0 becomes 10 to the power 9. So that is the initial amount of water before the drought starts. Now we can consider the integral balance, whereby our limits will be from 0, because that's the time 0, and we already have information about that, and our finish time, which we want is 60 days. So that's our upper and our lower limit, respectively. So therefore, we can take this and we bring the dt across to the other side, just like we did in the proof. And then we will give it them their own independent integral signs. So we'll have v of 0 and v of 60 dv, and then all of this integrated dt between 0 and 60. Now we can take this a step further. And we can break these apart if you want to give them their own independent um, integral. Again, you don't necessarily have to because you can, you know, do these as they stand. But it's just a, um, a way of illustrating that you can break it apart into their own individual components. So all you would do, and this is just the basic integration that you would have to do. So I'm not going to get into the step by step of the mathematics here. What is important is how the equations work in the context of the integral balance. If you want to get a real in-depth analysis of engineering mathematics, then we do have a bespoke engineering mathematics course. I'll put a link in the description to that. And that is everything that you will possibly need in order to be successful at chemical engineering. It highlights absolutely everything and it's based on my experience as a chemical engineering lecturer here in the UK. So you can be assured that everything that you will possibly need to excel in chemical engineering is in that course. Again, I'll put a link in the description if you are interested. So from here, what we could do is you will basically integrate these and you'll substitute in your upper and lower limits respectively. So you replace the T 
with zero and then with 60. Remember it's your upper limit minus your lower limit. And what you would end up with is V, so the volume of liquid water at 60 days is 4.45 times 10 to the power 8 liters. And that makes sense because we started off with 10 to the power 9 and after 60 days we've now went to 4.45 times 10 to the power 8. So I hope you can see how the transition between differential and integral balances work. For me personally, I prefer the integral balance because I feel that you get more control and you get more flexibility in the analysis that you can actually perform. And that's very prevalent for reactor design uh, systems as well. Again, I've got a lot of resources for reactor design and um, mass and energy balances in general. So I'll put links in the description to them and you can check them if you are interested as well. So that is the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful in explaining what a transient process is and how you actually switch between a differential and an integral um, balance method and how you actually apply it. If you liked this video, please like subscribe to the channel. It really helps us reach as many chemical engineering students as possible. Thank you for your time and we look forward to seeing you in another video.